So those last two talks were pretty wild. I mean, one was sort of a summary of brain AI interface semester long course in 10 minutes. Um, and this one just reminds you of that saying that the future is not evenly distributed and you saw it here first. Um, last speaker before lunch and last but not least. Um, Katrina Volz is a pretty extraordinary woman. She's the fastest ever graduate PhD from Stanford. And that's not a slacker. Uh, she's now using her roadrunner-like speed to use AI to complete a complete map of Parkinson's disease. And she's hell-bent on finding a cure for it. She's already brought in supporters like the Michael J. Fox Foundation, the Sergey Brin Family Foundation, Nobel Laureate Randy Schuckman, and MIT's own Ed Boyden. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for the kind introduction, and it's a real honor to be here today. About three years ago, I received my PhD in stem cell biology and regenerative medicine at Stanford University. I did my PhD with Irv Weissman, who's the first to isolate and characterize adult stem cells in humans. And my research was focused on finding the, uh, the progenitor cell to coronary arteries. So I had a great and original discovery and found the cell type that is forming the coronary arteries and the signaling event uh, behind that. Um, this research was uh, covered by many, uh, many outlets, including The Guardian, and some headlines said new discovery may help mend broken hearts. So I was all set to follow an academic career until at the end of 2016, I received a phone call from a person very close to me informing me that she got bad news, that she had been diagnosed with Parkinson's disease. This person is very important in my life and because of privacy and respect, I cannot disclose her identity. I was devastated. I stayed at home in bed and cried for two days until I made a resolution that I'm going to leave academia and I'm going to find a cure for Parkinson's disease. This has become a personal and very urgent mission of mine. I'm going to find a cure for Parkinson's disease. So I went out there, I talked to experts, I read papers, I thought about starting an, a, a, a laboratory around uh, doing research in Parkinson's. And I realized that Parkinson's is a very poorly understood disease. Now, there has been the time in biology where, where researchers were under the assumption that the depth and understanding of the genomic code of genomics will not only eradicate Parkinson's, but all diseases. A few years ago, we started to realize the sheer complexity when talking about diseases like Parkinson's disease. Today in biology, we are not only focusing on the genome, we are focusing on a whole set of homes, or the transcriptome, the set of genes that are being transcribed in a certain uh, condition, the proteome, the, the proteins that are being expressed uh, from the genome. So to understand diseases today, we need to understand how the genome and the transcriptome and the proteome connect. More specifically, how the genes, RNA, protein, cell organelles, cell types, organs, how are they connected and interdependent? Unfortunately, researchers are still not <coughs> studying biology in a way that it encompasses its entire complexity. The problem in scientific research is that scientific knowledge has become fragmented and buried and siloed across a myriad of different subfields of expertise that don't communicate. A, a researcher in a, who is expert in a subfield of Parkinson's has, no, has not the time nor the resources to get up to speed for the scientific developments outside of their area. Scientists don't have the tools to cope with the complexity of biology. They don't have the tools to get a bird-eye view of the problem 
to connect the dots between all of these different data sets. I knew we had to build a technology that is taking all of these millions of research documents out there, the patents, the clinical trial documents, the publications, and all of the other data sets, and bring it together to one place to ask better questions, to form better hypotheses, and run the appropriate experiments. Now, we are not the first ones to suggest the need of mapping the complex network of biology. Barabasi and colleagues has published a paper around a full set of protein-protein interactions. And diseases are highlighted at nodes of this network. And he relates this, uh, and he coins this, uh, this approach, the disease zone. And he compares it with a map of Manhattan, where specific activities are taking place at certain locations. There's theater at Broadway, finance at Wall Street, advertisement at Times Square. Now, we are taking a slightly different approach. We are not focusing on all the diseases. We are focusing on one disease in particular. We are taking all of the knowledge there is in Parkinson's and bring it together to one place. And we call it the Parkinson. So how do we do that? Well, one of the big challenges is that more than 80% of healthcare information is in a text-based format. It's in a format that computers can't read and understand. So we first had to develop a natural language processing system that is able to read and understand text so that we are able to put it into this network. So I put together a team of PhDs in artificial intelligence, computational biology, and neuroscience. And we started labeling biomedical sentences. We labeled the genes, the proteins, the RNA, the cell types, the organs, all of these types of things. And we labeled the relationship between these. We then took this data set and went to Stanford AI labs and asked them what they, what they could do with it. So with their expertise and our data set, we were able to generate a natural language processing pipeline that is able to identify all of these biologic entities and also the relationship between them and extract it so it's in a form that a computer can read. We can do that 10x faster than before and without the need of 100,000 of hand-labeled examples per model. For instance, in this sentence, you would need to have 600,000 hand-labeled um, examples to train these machine learning models to understand um, how to extract that. So we can do that with a fraction of examples. And the accuracy is as high as if an expert scientist would manually label these. So now we have generated a machine that is able to read and understand biomedical texts. And this together with other data sources that are already structured, like genomics, transcriptomics, etc., we put it together into this model, the Parkinson, to come up with better experiments. So we now ingested all of the data out there. There is, you know, in the public domain, you know, everything in PubMed, over 20 million articles, the patents, the clinical trial documents, but we also have access to a lot of proprietary information. So we're working together with the Parkinson's Institute and Clinic, the Michael J. Fox Foundation, and a lot of the other leaders in uh, Parkinson's research. So we have generated the first network of knowledge of Parkinson's disease, the Parkinson. If you look at one of these dots in the Parkinson, it captures a biological entity and all of the relationships that have ever been reported to engage in that, like all of the relationships. So our machine learning, uh, machine learning algorithms can look at the structure of the network and they can infer the structure of biology and come up with hypotheses. So scientists can query our, this graph, this, the Parkinson, and can ask questions. Based on all of the protein-protein interactions that, that you have ever seen, what are new ones? What are other ones? What would happen if you would block a certain receptor? What is the predicted outcome if you're gene editing a certain part of a network? Now, if the Parkinson suggests an experiment that leads to a null result, this information gets fed back into the Parkinson, and it gets smarter and smarter, meaning it's not going to uh, 
uh, produce the same suggestion again. Now, one thing that became very clear is that Parkinson's is not one disease. It actually is many different diseases. In a completely unsupervised and unbiased way, we picked up on five different clusters of Parkinson's patients. So there's no cure for Parkinson's. There's a cure for the different forms of Parkinson's. Now we are working on trying to find out what is the cellular machinery that is broken in each of these different subtypes. And this is, uh, and this is exactly uh, what we are aiming to do. We are trying to find medications that are specifically targeted for specific subforms of Parkinson patients. So we have generated the first network of all of the knowledge in Parkinson's disease. Information that was previously buried and fragmented and siloed on all of these research documents, millions and millions of research documents, and millions and millions of data sets. We brought it together to one place as our technology to ask better questions, to identify what drug targets are going to work in what patients. Now, our technology is actually universal. We could study any complex disease. We just would need to plug in the data for cancer or the data for Alzheimer's. So my intention was to model the complex network of biology of Parkinson's to come up with a cure. But in the process, we invented a digital scientist, a digital scientist who has access to all of the information out there that can constantly and instantly update itself and suggest specific hypotheses. The experiments that are then being run are being fed back into the digital scientist and it immediately learns and becomes smarter and smarter and smarter. This is how I wish all science to be done. There's simply no excuse for our current approaches in science. It's siloed, it's fragmented, it's slow. How strange is it that in the world of interconnected knowledge, of Internet of Things, of the Googles and Netflix, our most brilliant minds are still operating with software that is not able to connect knowledge, extract information, and make scientific, scientific predictions. We need to give scientists the tools they need to solve these big challenges ahead and bring science to the age of internet and AI. Thank you. Thank you.